Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another Electronics and More video. In today's video, I'm going to be repairing this keyless entry alarm remote for my vehicle. Over here, this button no longer works. This one over here for unlock, you see I pushed it, it's not on, I gotta wiggle it. That one's not working right, and the only one that works is for the trunk. So I'm going to pop this open, take a look at the switches, which are tactile switches, and I'm going to be replacing those switches. So let me open this up, and we'll take a look inside. These are the switches I'll be replacing right over here. This is the antenna. And take a look at the back side. There's a crystal coin cell holder and an integrated circuit. Let me place this inside of a holder to make it easier to work on. I was going to use my hot air reflow gun, which I show in another video if you haven't seen it. It's an excellent video. Be sure to check it out. The link is right over here, circle with the eye. You can click on it, drop down menu will appear, and you can find the link to my hot air video. Instead of using the hot air gun because I don't want to apply too much heat to this switch or the surrounding components, what I'm going to be using are my soldering tweezers. And I'll show you more at the end of this video what they look like, the entire unit. But right here are soldering tweezers. It's a whole unit. Dual heaters. And what I could do is I could adjust the spacing. And I'll be able to desolder one side at a time. And when I do that, I can lift it up and then desolder the opposite side to remove the switch. Once the switch has been removed, I'll take the new switch you see right over here, position it, then I'll take some of the reflow paste right down here, and I'll put a couple of dabs in each spot, and while holding this down, I'll bring the solder tweezers back over and melt one side in position. Once that's done, I'll go to the opposite side. I'm going to repeat the process for each switch. The soldering tweezers are set for around 375 degrees Celsius. Okay, let me position this under the switch on one side. The blade, very carefully. I'm going to reach in at another angle. Hopefully I don't block the camera. The tweezer tips are set at that spacing. When you squeeze it, it goes together. And you see how nicely that side lifted up. Now normally if you're using a regular soldering iron, you'd have to touch it there, touch it there, touch it there, go back and forth. And if the component is a large size, it's going to act like a heat sink. So sometimes when you heat this point up, the time you jump to this side, this side will cool off already, causing it to lock down. So the beauty of these soldering tweezers is that you could do both together at the same time. Now I'm going to do the same on the left side. Using my left hand, which I don't like to do. Hopefully I could do it. Here it is. Okay. Let me finish removing each one, and then we're going to take a closer look at the switch before putting them back in. Okay, that side is up. Now this side going straight down. And how beautiful that was. Probably grab this. Okay. Let's go to the bottom one. Very easily, that came right up. Go over here with the tweezers. And look how easy that popped off. And you can see there's some crud, so I'm going to take a Q-tip with 91% rubbing alcohol. Just clean that area. Let's do that first. Okay, let me try rubbing here and see if it comes off nice and easy. Yep. Get all that gook out of there. Clean the pad. The good thing about the soldering tweezers, if you look right over here, they're excellent when you're working on diodes, inductors, resistors. 
because if you wanted to change this component out right here, all you would do is place it sideways, let it heat that side and that side simultaneously, and then you would squeeze and lift the component straight off. makes it very simple to remove components that are surface mounted. In another one of my videos I show an excellent electronic desoldering device and it's used for through hole components. It has a built in vacuum pump. If you haven't seen it, once again you're going to take a look up here, circle with the eye, and you can refer to the drop down menu. And I'll also place an end card to that video in this video. Rubbing alcohol works extremely well. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. A little bit of there's no reason for me to actually glue these down. So I'm just gonna position them. That looks good. Let it air dry. To test this, I'm going to be using my digital multimeter, the MT826 must tool. And I'm also going to be using this very nice probe which allows for one-handed operation when testing components. You have positive and negative plugged into the DMM and you can do everything with the one hand and it's extremely inexpensive. These are like four bucks. So I'm going to grab over here alright like that and I'm going to push down. That's one of the good ones. Move that to the side. Let's see which one this is. This is the one that doesn't work. Gotta really push hard, see it still don't work. Nothing. That's a dud. And this one worked once in a while, I think. Yep. So each side is where it makes connection. And this over here should be continuity across these two. Yep. And continuity. See how easy these are? Oh, it makes, makes everything so much easier to work with. All right, now let's get started on putting the new buttons back in. I'm going to place some paste on each one of these pads. Like I said, not easy doing this with the camera right in front of my face. I could always add more later. 
It will be much easier once one side is soldered in place. Okay. Right there looks pretty damn good. <clears throat> Let me get the soldering tweezers, put that side back down after I tin them. Looks pretty damn good. Now we do the opposite side. Okay. And you're now looking at the board all completed. Three new switches in position. Give it a press. LED at the top. And all three work perfect. Saved a lot of money fixing it up. And these tactile switches over here were very inexpensive. I think I paid $2 for 10 of them. Now I'm going to show you the tweezers, exactly what they look like and how it works, as well as the one-handed probe for my digital multimeter. Okay, right over here is the one-handed probe connected up to my digital multimeter. Let me put this on a continuity alarm, which it is. Touch it together. If I'd like to check capacitance or inductance, resistance, all I would do on a surface mounted component, go up to it on each side, touch, and I'll have a reading. There will be a link placed in the video description area for this probe, as well as the soldering tweezers. Now you're looking at the soldering tweezers, which I use for desoldering surface mounted components. Nice metal holder. Protective cap when not in use. Two heating elements with the curved tips. And what this knob does is it adjusts the spacing. All right, that's maximum when it gets loose. And then you can squeeze and hold things. So what I did is I adjusted the correct spacing for my tactile switch like that. And I just used it two together at the same time. Loosen this up just a hair. Put that back on. Over here is a full temperature control. Fahrenheit or Celsius. And actually, let me turn it on and show you. Take that off. Set for 732. There it's heating up. And it does heat fairly quickly. hair that way. It says electrostatic discharge safe right over here. Okay, it's off. And you can see this blink on and off to maintain the heat on the tips. There it goes. It's heating up again to maintain that 732. I could turn this all the way up. Let's see how high it goes. Right there's max. 900. So 900 is the max. Let's put it over there. And switch this over to Celsius. 430. Put it up. 480 is the high. Extremely, extremely handy tool when you're working with surface mounted components. The link has been placed in the video description area along with a money-saving coupon code. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.